Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is that time of year. We are nearing the end of 2023. And so because of that, it's time to do some rankings, some top 10s. We got top 10 movies coming. I'll be doing our ranking of all the comic book movies from this year. And here we are talking about the top 10 TV series of 2023. Now, I do want to preface this by saying that TV is kind of where I was lacking a bit this year. I definitely really stepped up my movie game and, you know, in the film industry for sure. But but TV, I was definitely lacking. Um, I, you know, for the most part, you know, I saw some of the, the bigger shows for sure. Uh, but for the most part, I ended up sticking more towards the comic book stuff and Star Wars and that type of TV, just because that's what I'm most interested in. So a lot of the regular shows that are, you know, more drama focused or original series or uh, sequel seasons like, like Succession. Um, I would have loved to have seen that, especially considering most people say that that final season is the best show this year. Uh, but I hadn't seen any of the previous seasons and I didn't have time to get caught up. Same goes for something like Barry. Um, and, and then, like I said, original shows, like I would have loved to have checked out Beef or the, the Fall of the House of Usher. And these are definitely projects that I'm going to be checking out at some point in the future, but I just didn't have time to get them fully watched before doing this video. Um, so this video, um, I'll be ranking the top 10 shows that I did see in 2023. Uh, and, you know, obviously you can let me know your own rankings, your own top 10 in the comments below. Uh, but without further ado, I suppose let's jump into this. Starting off with number 10, we have Ahsoka. Now, Ahsoka, of course, is a Star Wars series. It's a spinoff from The Mandalorian because we're introduced to Rosario Dawson as live action Ahsoka in The Mandalorian Season 2. And I, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't really looking forward to the show. I mean, I loved her in The Mandalorian Season 2. So that was my big uh, motivation going into the show. But I I haven't seen the Clone Wars, so I don't know a whole lot about the character of Ahsoka. And plus, to be completely honest, like a lot of Star Wars in recent years hasn't been the best, especially considering we got the Mandalorian season three earlier this year, which years ago, I mean, season one and season two were, were those would be the type of shows and seasons that would be at the top of a list like this. But season three doesn't even make this list. So I wasn't really super hyped for this show. I mean, I watched the trailers. I wasn't super excited or anything. Um, but then I actually watched it and man, this show was really good. It was really a huge surprise to me. Like it was great storytelling, great action. Um, our villain, uh, our villains, um, there were some great ones in here. I mean, Thrawn was great. Uh, Balin Skull was a great addition, played by uh, Ray Stevenson. Um, rest in peace. But that was that was a great performance. Uh, getting Sabine in here, getting all the Rebels characters together. It was great. Of course, the return of Anakin Skywalker, Hayden Christensen in live action, way better than his return in Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ahsoka was great, and again, just a huge surprise to me. Now, coming in at number nine is HBO Max's Love and Death. So, Love and Death is based on a true story, and actually, th this story was already told in a series either last year or the year before in Candy. I believe it was a Hulu series, but here we have Elizabeth Olsen in the title role, and this is a great show. I mean, that was my main reason for watching this show, was like, oh, it's Elizabeth Olsen one of my biggest celebrity crushes, of course I'm going to watch it. Uh, but it turned out to be a really good show. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen, of course, fantastic actress as well. Um, so that helped, but I enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't know really anything about Candy or this um, true story. So getting to see it kind of from a murder mystery perspective and see all the complex layers and the relationships and everything, it was a lot of fun. Coming in at number eight, we have Superman and Lois season three. Yes, that's right. We got a CW show on here, but no, no flash or anything like that because that final season was not good. Uh, but Superman and Lois, man, this is a show that continues to really make you sit back and go, how is this on the CW? Because it's that good. And season three, to be completely honest, I started watching it, but then I kind of fell off a bit. And then I didn't end up finishing the season. I had like half the season left and didn't end up finishing it until months after it had finished airing on the CW. 
But this is some of the best Superman content we've ever gotten. And and honestly, a couple years ago, I didn't really even love Superman all that much. But then I watched Smallville, fell in love with the character, and he's great here. Uh, you have Tyler Hecklin as a fantastic Superman, Superman as a dad, his relationship with Lois, and the villains for this season were great as well. Um, you have Bruno Mannheim, who was a character I wasn't really looking forward to, but the way they integrated him into the plot was fantastic. Um, one of the central villains, in quotation marks, of this season is Cancer, because Lois Lane in this season is diagnosed with breast cancer. And what a brilliant thing to do for this show, because one of the problems that's always been with doing a Superman movie or TV show is how do you do a villain that's that he can't just defeat in seconds? So give him a villain such as his wife having cancer of a villainous presence that he can do nothing about. And just the emotional weight that comes with that that was beautiful to see we have lex luther in here was great um the introduction of doomsday the season ends on a cliffhanger and i'm so excited to see where you're getting at least one more season it'll be a shorter season you know lower budget less of the cast so that'll be interesting to see but man season three was fantastic Coming in at number seven, we have Marvel Studios Loki season two, which I will be completely honest, I do think still the first season was better, but this is definitely one of the MCU's best projects this year, for sure. Uh, and especially because with the MCU right now, we're in a state where it's like, oh, this is a great project. And then, oh, the MCU is so done. Oh, we are so back. And then we are so done. Like, it's so back and forth on the quality of these projects right now. But Loki was great. Um, you know, it still goes so far in developing uh, the TVA and the time travel and multiverse logic in the MCU going forward in the multiverse saga. Uh, we had Jonathan Majors here in a much bigger role than the first season. And Loki, man, the character development on this guy is fantastic. Where we end this season is just perfect for the god of stories. Now we come in at number six with Gen V. Again, another big surprise for me because I didn't even think I was going to watch this because I haven't seen The Boys. So why would I watch a spinoff of The Boys? But then I watched the trailer and people were like, oh, you don't necessarily have to have seen The Boys. So I was like, yeah, I'll check it out. And I loved it. Man, this show was great. Um, you know, it, this gets me more excited to watch The Boys uh, leading into season four next year. Um uh, I mean, this is just, it takes what I assume is good about the boys, but takes it to a level that I can more relate to because obviously this takes place with college students. I'm a college student. Um, and it was really great. Uh, again, you know, getting to see college students with superpowers and seeing the complexities of that, the hidden secrets within this college, it was great to see. I really enjoyed seeing that on display. And then number five is Shrinking, the Apple TV Plus original series Shrinking, starring Jason Siegel and Harrison Ford, Jason Siegel's best performance of his career. Harrison Ford is great to have him in here. And this show, I actually have not even finished watching it. I just started watching it last night. Uh, but it's fantastic. It's from the creators of Ted Lasso. Brett Goldstein, who plays Roy Kent on Ted Lasso, uh, is one of the co-creators and writers on this series. Uh, so, of course, it's good. And yes, it's it's very Ted Lasso and vibes, but more with a bit of a more mature tone because this is a comedy about grief. You have Jason Siegel's character, who he's a shrink, he's a therapist, uh, but he himself is dealing with the death of his wife, and he he starts to get pretty inventive and more creative with his uh, methods of uh, curing for his his patients. And so far, again, it's just it's fantastic. I love Ted Lasso, and so this is like the next Ted Lasso, in my opinion, especially considering that Ted Lasso is now over, and we'll be talking about that a bit later in this video. But coming in at number four is DC's Doom Patrol. Doom Patrol, the final season, season four, is now out on max. This is a bit of a tricky one because technically the season started last year in 2022. They aired the first half, and then we went literally almost a whole year before we got part two of season four, but it did not disappoint. It was well worth the wait. This is 
I think, in my opinion, DC's best TV show that they have ever put out there. It takes such an obscure group of characters and heroes from the comics and presents them in a way where in the show, they're not really even superheroes. They're just people, really messed up people with a lot of problems. This is probably one of the best examples of character development that I have ever seen across TV and where they end things with season four with this final season is just so perfect for every character. Every character gets their own little ending that works so perfectly for them and so beautifully. I was in tears for this finale. Doom Patrol is just so good and I cannot recommend it enough. Now, I already mentioned it. We got Ted Lasso in here at number three. We're in the top three now, people, with Ted Lasso season three. Now, a lot of people did not really care for this season. A lot of people kind of feel like, you know, it was still good, but nowhere near as good as the first two seasons. And I will agree, definitely the first two seasons are better of Ted Lasso. But, I mean, people are completely leaving this off their top ten list, like, totally. And it's like, people... It's still a good season. Ted Lasso is fantastic. Um, man, th this show, I I started watching it in, I think, January of this year. I watched the first season, watched the second season, binge-watched all that, and then got to season three coming out, I believe, starting in March. And this show just changed my life. I mean, it's so, it's so funny, just like Shrinking is. Um, and But it's also so motivational, so inspirational. It, Ted Lasso is such a great character. And with this being the final season, just like Doom Patrol, it comes to a, what I think is a perfect ending for this show, for these characters. Um, you know, it hasn't been said for sure that it's the final season. I mean, that's how the creators designed it was to last three seasons. Uh, could we get a spinoff? Maybe. I think that's still totally possible. Will we get it? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but definitely Ted Lasso was fantastic. Now, number two is The Last of Us. At, pretty, at the top of pretty much everybody's list for this year is The Last of Us. Once again, I've said it so many times in this video, but another huge, huge surprise for me because I didn't know anything about The Last of Us video game. I never played it. I didn't know any of the story of it. And I remember trailers coming out for this and me just not caring. I don't think I even watched any of the trailers. I just did not care. But, you know, this year, I guess one of my New Year's resolutions this year was to get more involved and more tapped into kind of like the culture of film and TV for this year and get more into watching stuff that I wouldn't normally watch. And this is definitely one of those things that I wouldn't normally watch. And because I had HBO and, you know, it was like, oh, HBO Sunday nights and I wasn't busy that first Sunday night, I was like, eh, I mean, why not? I guess I might as well. And man, this show is fantastic. Even not knowing the story of the game, the performances from Pedro Pascal and um, oh Bella Ramsey, oh just so good. And then you get these little one-off episodes, like with Bill and Frank, and I think it was episode five, and then episode six or seven, um, where you just get these little breaks from the main main storyline. And just tell these smaller stories about these other characters. And it's just so beautiful. That episode three with Bill and Frank is one of the most beautiful hours of TV I have ever seen. That truly touched me. I've watched, rewatched that episode so many times. It's, it's so good. Especially because it, that's an episode that it can, it could even stand alone. Like it can stand on its own. That could be its own little movie itself. And it's, oh, I cannot wait for season two. I imagine it's going to be so good. Um, again, I don't know much about the second game. I know about the big spoiler because obviously everybody's talked about that online. Um, so I'm interested to see how that's handled. But man, season one was just fantastic. And speaking of fantastic, Cousin it's The Bear. The best TV series of 2023 is The Bear. Just like Ted Lasso, I never saw any of this before this year. It was, um, 
I think it was like right before season two came out. It was like May ish uh, when I decided, you know, I remember a bunch of people saying how good this was last year and how this was one of the best years of 2022. Uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll watch this before season two comes out. Watched it, fell in love with it. And I was like, man, this is great. Cannot wait for season two. Then we got season two in June and it was even better because it, one of the uh, strengths of this show it, is it's so real. It's so realistic with the environment of the kitchen. It's so intense. Uh, I also love the the one takes that are featured here throughout the show. And season two, it still features that, but it also it kind of takes a step back and gives us a more quieter, more character focused season. Some of these characters that you really didn't get to know a whole lot about in the first season, you really dive into. Uh, I don't, I think it was maybe episode four. I don't even remember the character's name because, you know, this was months ago, but, uh, this guy right here, the pastry chef, the episode that we featured on him might've been my favorite episode of this season because it was fantastic. Just him learning how to be a baker from Will Poulter. You got Will Poulter in here. That was great to see. Uh, um, episode six, obviously fantastic. The flashback Christmas episode with the big, huge family dinner, the big fights that ensue there, man, the stellar cast and cameos that come out in that episode. And then episode seven, I believe forks, man, focusing on Evan Moss box rocks character. Um, fantastic. The transition and the character development that guy has had in this show is just brilliant and uh, playing Taylor Swift's love story over that scene is one of my favorite scenes of TV of this year. It's fantastic. And just the whole cast is fantastic. Eben Moss Bachrock, Ayo Adabiri, uh, J- Jeremy Allen White, man. I, I never even heard of this guy until this show. Watched him here, fell in love with him. I also watched um, an Apple TV Plus film with him uh, this year, fingernails. The movie itself wasn't that great, but I mean, he in the movie was good. And very recently I watched the iron claw in theaters. So, so good. And Jeremy Allen white was fantastic in that movie. You could check out my review on it on the channel. Um, and I'll be doing again, my top 10 movies in a couple days. That film is definitely high up on that list, but man, the bear is so good. I cannot wait for season three. So folks, There you have it, the top 10 series of my personal picks for 2023. Again, I didn't have a huge wide variety of shows that I watched, but man, the ones that I did watch, especially these top like five, five five-ish were truly so, so good. I love them so much. And some of them are over now. Some of them are continuing into the future, and I cannot wait to see the future. I can't wait to see what we have in store for 2024. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to have to do it again. Let me know your own rankings in the comments below. Stay tuned for those other rankings and top 10 videos coming in the next few days to round out the year of 2023. But for now, guys, thanks so much for watching. Please drop a like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I keep it to date on everything goes on in the movie life.